when I tell people I work with OCD for a living, guess what the first thing they say is? We all have a little OCD in us, don't we? All right, so let's go through what OCD actually is and what it isn't. It actually is pretty offensive to individuals who struggle with OCD to have someone else say, we all have a little OCD in us, or I could use a little OCD in my life because my room is really dirty. That's like saying, we all have a little schizophrenia in us. I totally get it for those who don't actually understand what OCD is, as it's portrayed on the internet and TV shows the very incorrect way, that it's, all, it's gotta all be about ordering things and about washing hands, right? Well, I can tell you, I've been working with OCD for years and somebody coming in about germs and ordering is actually not that common. I definitely see other things way more than that. So why is that not portrayed on TV? So I ran into this test the other day that said, you will know if you are OCD if you go through these 10 questions. Every single question said, how are these different? Here's three pictures here. How are they different? And one of them would be like a smaller circle and the other ones would be the same circle. Or it would have a square that was slightly to the left. Or it would have one color that was off. And if you were able to recognize that you got to the end of the test and you answered all 10 questions right, you have OCD. Whoa! And guess what? There's hundreds of these tests. No wonder people think they have OCD. So as you're taking this test, you actually can kind of get bugged. Yeah, that color definitely doesn't match there. Yeah, that square is over to the right a little bit and the other ones are off center. And okay, it just like activates your brain a little bit and says, yeah, that's, something's off with that. But guess what? I'm not feeling immense amounts of anxiety taking this test. They are taking something very normal and natural for most people and generalizing it. Most people like things to be in a certain order. They like routine. They like things to be a certain way. But if it's not, they deal with it. They move on. When an individual has OCD and their routine may be broken, it could cause a lot of distress in their life. There are people who make shirts that say obsessive Christmas disorder, obsessive coffee disorder. There are companies that have made binders and notebooks that say to help you be a little more OCD. Like this is something people want. I've never met somebody that has OCD that actually wants OCD. So joking is not cool. When somebody says to me, oh, you work with OCD? We all have a little OCD and then, you know, they nudge their spouse or they whatever and it's funny and they're trying to make a big joke. I don't smile and I tell them, I'm so sorry that you actually feel immense amounts of anxiety throughout your entire day worrying about these things. That is so difficult. How do you get through that? And they just look at me and they're like, Sometimes they don't say anything. Sometimes they're like, what? And I say, oh, well, let me tell you what OCD really is for individuals who struggle with it. It's not a conversation they usually like to have because they feel kind of foolish. But I'm willing to take that risk with people because you know what? I care. We got to spread this awareness. These are things that I say. This is what OCD is. The fear of being contaminated with germs. The fear of harming other people, unwanted impulses, intrusive sexual thoughts, even about children excessive focus on your moral right and wrong, thinking about this all day long, the fear of losing things that you may need, order and symmetry, things need to be just right. I just touched that door handle and it did not feel right, so I gotta touch it again. The fear of something bad happening because you didn't do something. I didn't check that stove one more time. I didn't lock those windows. Some superstitious type of fears. I just went under a bridge and I need to go under a bridge two times or else something bad's gonna happen. So if there's not a bridge near me, I need to actually turn back around and go under that bridge one more time. But when I get home, I need to go on a back way because if I go on the back way, I don't go under that bridge because I know I can only go two times a day. Whew, I just saved my family. And with OCD, there are compulsions. Sometimes individuals will repeatedly check their spouse, make sure they're okay, make sure they still love them, make sure they love their spouse. They may spend a lot of time washing their hands. They may spend a lot of time praying. They may spend a lot of time accumulating junk keeping that around them. Some individuals specifically are worried about body fluids, household chemicals, just the fear of acting on some impulse, the fear of saying something they shouldn't be saying out loud, the fear of offending God, sometimes the concern of having a physical illness. I've got Parkinson's, I'm gonna get skin cancer because I was out in the sun for at least five minutes today. Oh, I just read a lot about that, so I wonder if it's gonna happen to me. Sometimes the fear of doing things imperfectly. I only got a 99% of my test, I gotta get 100 or I'm not gonna go to that college that I need to go to or I wrote the letter R a certain way and it didn't look right, so I'm gonna erase it and I'm gonna rewrite it, but it didn't look right the second time, so I'm gonna do it again, but it didn't look right, then I'm gonna do it again, then it didn't look right, then I'm gonna do it again. 
10 minutes in. I'm not doing so well on that test because I'm stuck. Sometimes people need to repeat certain words. They need to have a certain image in their head. Sometimes they need to do things that just feel right for them. Sometimes they might worry if they're gay. Sometimes their brain tells them they need to create certain rules to keep themselves safe or others safe. Sometimes they don't even know what that safe thing is. They just know that my brain says I need to count for the next minute every single time I blink because I don't know what's gonna happen if I don't. So of course, when I'm talking to people, I don't have time to go through this whole list, but I share a lot of information with them. Sometimes it freaks them out to realize that like, whoa, I am so sorry that I just said this to you about OCD. So something that I would say, if you struggle with OCD or someone joking about OCD bothers you, come up with something, a sentence or two that you can tell other people not to be offensive, but more to say, here's some information. Here's what actually OCD is. If you struggle with it yourself, share your story. Because guess what? That takes power away from what you're going through. And it's actually gonna help you reduce some of those symptoms that you have. And next time you run into one of those tests that say, experts say this test is impossible. Only those who have OCD will pass it. Don't fall for it. Don't send it. Don't laugh. Instead, maybe send an email to those people and say, hey, you know what? Here's what OCD really is. You can advocate, ask them to take that down. You can use it as a good talking piece to individuals and say, you know what, this is not OCD, but this is. Just like we wouldn't say, I'm so schizophrenic about my bedroom. We wouldn't say, I'm so OCD about my bedroom. So if you struggle with OCD, make sure you find a professional that can help you. If you go to iocdf.org, this is a really good resource. Individuals on there are trained. They're specialized in this. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you do so. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. And as you're taking this test, you're like, whoopsie. The fear of harming other people again. And with OCD, there's a compulsion. They, they spend, they may spend a lot. Or I wrote this letter, this, or I wrote, or I let,